Hey Closeteers, it's Zach, and if you're watching me, it must be Wednesday. This week's topic is our favorite books, favorite LGBT books, um, and trying to tell you a little bit about our favorites. I have, I thought about this, I'm like, do I even read any LGBT uh, authors or any stories? The storylines, not so much, but then I was like, oh my god, I read David Sedaris, like it's my job. And uh, so that's probably my favorite author. And I've got one of his latest book here, um, When You're Engulfed in Flames, which is really good. Um, he always, it's dark. It's darker than his other stuff. He's getting darker. Um, I also have his Holidays on Ice. I actually read most of his books when I lived in Providence. And I had this like random roommate that I didn't know. I met her like through Craigslist. And she had all of his books, like, from the beginning. And so I would, like, take them off her bookshelf, um, which was in the living room, and read them at night. And that was the only time I have ever woken myself up laughing from, like, a dead sleep. Because I was thinking about something. I had, like, read the book just before I went to bed. And, you know, there I am, like... <laughs> oh. What? If you want to read David Sedaris, I would start with Me Talk Pretty One Day. I think that's his, my, my favorite book of his, but all of them have really good stories in them. But Me Talk Pretty One Day is like, wake you up from a dead sleep laughing. Kind of funny. And these are just biographies, and they're not necessarily LGBT in their content or their authorship, but um, come on. Kathy Griffin. Hello. Okay. Kristen Chenoweth. Mm hmm I, yeah, I, I have that one. And last but certainly not least, Margaret Cho. These three ladies are all about the LGBT community. And these books are really good, actually. I, to be honest, I wouldn't have bought the Kristen Chenoweth book for myself, but I got it for a birthday present for my friend who knew I would love it. So thank you, Susie. Uh, but the other two, yeah, I totally bought because um, these two ladies, Kathy and Margaret, are amazing and they rock my world and where else can you get a quote like I love the word faggot because it describes my kind of man I don't know if she did that in this book but this book is actually more about her activism and just like standing up for yourself and being like you know the titles I, ch I have chosen to stay and fight and she's just chosen to be herself, as radical as that is, to be who she believes she should be and stand up for the things that she loves. Anne Rice is my other uh, LGBTQ author. And even though she doesn't like particularly write about, uh, you know, LGBT storylines, those vampires are obviously gay. I mean, any of the, like, the transformation scenes where they like bite the other person, it's, it's homoerotic. I can just, can I, gets me a little heated, like in a good way. The only book I've read actually all the way through was The Vampire Armand. I asked Matt if he had any, any ideas and he mentioned Oscar Wilde. Of course, Oscar Wilde um, was a notorious gay man and banned from British literature for, or like, I guess they couldn't teach it or something for a long time once they found out he was gay. Um, but his, I mean, his stories and plays are amazing. Uh, James Joyce, who I don't read, I haven't read, but Matt really likes him. Uh, Tennessee Williams, giving us masterpieces of American plays. Um, so those are his three suggestions, so read anything by them. Uh, and, the, and I will too. I promise to read more James Joyce. And more Oscar Wilde, actually. My suggestion was um, Patricia Highsmith, who wrote the Talented Mr. Ripley stories. Um, she's crazy. She is a crazy lesbian. But she wrote some really amazing stuff. And that got me thinking of David Sedaris's anthology that he put together called Children Playing Before a Statue of Hercules. It has, it's an anthology of short stories, and if you want to get into reading short stories or check out some authors who have written short stories who have also written bigger things, like Patricia Highsmith, 
Um, not necessarily LGBT, but some, a lot of them are. Um, read that book, Children Playing Before a Statue of Hercules. Uh, it's really good. I just read it like a couple months ago and I got some great, there's great stories in it and just has great uh, ideas for like authors that you can get into. Uh, okay, that's it for my LGBT favorites. My other favorites are, oh my god, hands down, Ray Bradbury, read Dandelion Wine. It's probably not one that you would read in school, like Fahrenheit 451 or something like that, but it's just as good, if not better. I mean, Ray Bradbury is amazing, and this book, uh, to me, is like the perfect summer day, or the perfect summer in general. Like, it, it's about a summer in this, like, young boy's life, and it's so good. Um, it's totally one of my favorites. Um, along the Ray Badbury lines, uh, Gary Paulson. I used to read him when I was younger, and he writes a lot of, oh, he writes for adults as well, and I read this book called Winter Dance by him. Very, very good. Um, Gary Paulson is always going to be there for me. And Raoul Dahl um, also writes for children, but also writes adult short stories. And uh, I just read his anthology called Skin. And that has some like really dark and twisty stories. And I, it was just really satisfying to read that. So again, not LGBT, but really, really good. And this was totally random. It's called The Swimming Pool Season by Rose Tremaine, a British author, and I do not know where I found this book. I bought it for a dollar twenty-five. It was like the best dollar twenty-five I have ever spent. This book was just a fun little novel, um, and I just, I haven't read it in a while, so I couldn't even tell you what it's about really, um, but the characters in it are really good, um, and it's just, I, I like it. Check it out. I liked it. And then, oh, um, they're going to make this into a movie, or they already have, called Shop Girl by Steve Martin. Again, another little short story novella. Uh, um, that's one of my, it'll always be one of my all-time fam favorites, and really quick, because it's a short little story. Um, short stories and novellas are so good. Get into those, because they're short, they're quick, they're awesome. Oh, and also I wanted to mention, go get a library card. This is mine. I started buying books, like all those that I showed you, obviously I bought, and then I started buying ones that I didn't like. What am I doing? Why am I buying books that I don't like? So I've gotten into going to the library, uh, which should be something second nature to most people, but um, to me it wasn't, and I have a hard time finding books in the library because libraries aren't set up to advertise books, they're set up to organize books. So. Until recently, I didn't really like going into them, but a friend of Matt's um, was at my wedding and we were talking about books and her dad was a librarian and she said her tip for me was to go into a Barnes & Noble or go into a Borders or wh whatever bookstore, go online to like Amazon.com or something and start looking at books that you liked and see what they suggest for you and start going through those categories and that's where you're going to get presented with books that you may like based on your books that you've already read. Um, that's where you get introduced to new authors and then you just put that book on your hold list at the library and they'll get it for you. Go find some more LGBT authors and let me know about them down in the comments below and have fun reading and I will see you guys next week. Bye!